Hey, Jean here, and these are all the new features you need to know about in Satellite 3D version 2.5.9F and 2.5.9G. There are two main features to go over, including a new constant light that I think you'll love, and some powerful film color effects that you can bake straight into the render view for the camera. These were introduced in version 2.5.9F, but we'll also briefly cover some of the bug fixes and improvements made in 2.5.9G, so let's go through it. If you aren't updated to the latest version, all you have to do is launch Satellite 3D and you'll be prompted to update the app. Or if you're installing it fresh, you'll have the latest version already. If you see version 2.5.9G, then you're good to go. Let's first cover the bug fixes and then we'll get into the new features. First, there was a grain issue on Mac computers that has been resolved, so that's good to go. A color space issue when applying some of the LUTs, which by the way, we will cover because those are part of the new features coming up here in a little bit. And this is a big one. On Mac, you can now upload images to the community tab again because there was a small issue where you couldn't upload your final shots to the project files to show off how the real world examples worked with your actual set. So that's a really cool feature and be sure to check that out on the community page. They also fix an issue where Mac users couldn't delete entries on the community tab, so that's really great just in case you wanted to update your current sets that are up there, as well as some other minor bug fixes that have been resolved. So that's it for bug fixes and enhancements, now on to the fun stuff. So first, let's talk about the new light that we have, the Aperture LS1200D Pro. This is a constant light that's perfect for video and super powerful to freeze motion and stills work, and has become a staple in studios around the world. So you'll find this almost everywhere and it's good to be familiar with it. With 1200 watts of output, this thing is a beast. So as an example, let's say we're setting up an interview with this lovely lady. Let's get her sitting in a chair. Uh, I'll grab this chair and put it in the scene. That looks pretty good. Uh, and then I'm going to click a pose preset setting so that we can have her sitting down in the chair, adjust her position a little bit. And that way it looks like she's actually sitting. Now let's pull in a film camera, set the frames per second to 24, or you could do 25 if you're in Europe, and set the shutter angle to 180 degrees, which is equivalent to about 1 50th of a second for your shutter speed. And let's set the camera's aperture to f2.8, which is super common for an interview like this. And now let's put the light up and get it set into the scene. By default, it comes with the parabolic standard small reflector put on. And if we bring this closer to the subject, we'll see that it's way overexposed. And that's just because this light is so powerful but we don't want to blind the lovely lady. So let's lower the power all the way down and you can see that it's still overexposed. So we could adjust the camera settings, but I like the aperture where it is. It's giving me the depth of field I want. So there's actually a feature that you may not know about. I don't think it's brand new, but you can actually add ND filters to your camera. So let's just apply neutral density to the camera and get that down to an exposure that looks right. And that looks pretty good. So now let's set the focus on her eye, turn off the focus area so we can see it clearly and we're good to go. But the light is looking pretty harsh. So let's go through the different modifiers that we can put on the 1200D. So as I said, by default, this is the standard reflector. We also have the Fresnel, which is a modifier that lets you focus your beam of light in a really smooth way. So this is kind of like that Hollywood style, uh, old school paramount lighting. And then we also have the Light Dome 2, which is super popular and you've probably seen it in every YouTuber studio tour ever. So we have that and you'll notice that the light output changes significantly with different modifiers and that's totally normal. That's the nature of how light works and how soft boxes work. They suck up some of the light, but what's really great about the 1200 is that we can increase the power to even overpower the uh, ND filter. We have plenty of room to work with with this light. It's just an amazingly powerful light. And just like the other soft boxes, we have the ability to keep the modifier open and adjust internal diffusion in both internal and external diffusion and add a grid to help keep the light spill down if desired. We also have this rectangular light box or soft box with its diffusion grids. There's also a lantern, which is great for spreading light in all directions for an ambient light or to just fill out an entire room. There's the light dome mini, which is excellent for on location work or for medium soft light or beauty shots. And of course, with all the diffusion and and grid options. And finally, we have the 12 by 48 inch or one by four foot strip box, which makes for an excellent edge light and of course many other uses. And it also has all the grid and diffusion options as well. 
You can also control the color temperature of the light and, of course, add filters and gels to make the light any color you want. So that is an overview of the Aperture LS 1200D Pro. Now let's move on to the next major new feature, which is custom LUTs and color adjustments. So I went ahead and fleshed out this set a little more to give it more interest, and I wanted to show you all the great ways you can visualize your final video with the new color lookup tables, or LUTs, built right into Satellite. First of all, if you hop over to the camera view, you'll see a dropdown for True Color, False Color, and Yale Zone. If you didn't know that those tools were there, now you do. And we won't go into all the details because they're not part of the new features, but just know that for filmmakers, these are excellent tools to have. Now to access the looks menu, all you have to do is click on this icon right here with the three sliders, and voila, there it is. A new interface pops up with some familiar controls. First off, you can toggle the effects on and off, so that you can at any time switch back to seeing the true camera readout. And there are all these really cool effects that we are going to go through now. So you'll see these sliders, which are very familiar if you've done any color correction before. There's the contrast slider, which we can bring down to make your footage look almost like log footage, or brought up to really crush the shadows and highlights to add more contrast, if that's the look you're going for. Of course, you might want to add just a little more contrast to give it a little more pop. We also have saturation, a vignette control, which simulates the darkening of the edges of your frame. And we also have a film grain effect, which is awesome because adding grain always looks nice. You can adjust the size of the grain so that you have a really blotchy vintage vibe, or we can make it smaller to give it more of a low light feel or whatever texture you're going for. And then we have LUT strength, but of course we don't have a LUT applied yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we just click on the LUT selection dropdown, you'll be greeted with a new menu of all these really cool looks that include emulations of film and more. So all you have to do is click through them and give them a try so you can kind of preview and see what they look like, or if you know this specific look you're going for, you can just select that one in the menu. For me, I really like the blue hour look for this shot, so let's go ahead and select that. But it's too strong, so all I have to do is pull down the LUT strength slider and dial it into exactly how I want. And that looks pretty good. But of course, once we have the look we want, we can toggle it on and off as we desire, so you can always get back to what it looks like straight out of camera. Now you can also import your own LUTs, which is super cool. So if you have a LUT pack or a favorite look that you always go to, you can import that. Lastly, down here at the very bottom, you'll notice that you have the ability to change your color space, which is really handy because it allows you to render the shot at the proper fidelity to make sure that it's looking exactly how you need it to. So for example, sRGB is the perfect color space to preview your final product in because most likely that's what you're going to be exporting in to distribute your video to the web. But if you want to see your render in higher fidelity, you can select Adobe RGB, for example, and it will provide a much smoother transition of color, but be aware that your final output video may not look quite as nice because it'll be baked down to sRGB anyway but it's a really great way to check on how your work is looking, and that's why it's great to be able to switch back and forth between the different color spaces. So we have some really fantastic options for camera looks in Satellite 3D version 2.5.9F and later, and I encourage you to experiment with them to get the exact look that you want. And that just about covers the new features in Satellite 3D, the new powerful Aperture LS 1200D Pro, and the new color effects panel for the camera, more tools that Elixir is building to make your previous work that much more effective. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. If there's anything else you'd like to learn, we'd love to hear from you, so definitely let us know. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for all future tutorials. You can also get a 15-day free trial of Satellite 3D at the link in the description. Until next time, this is Jean. Have a wonderful day and set your lights right.